Well guys, we had an incredibly busy weekend. And I've got two videos that are separate videos I need to edit and put up. In addition to the fact that I have Kitty's video of kidding to put up. So we didn't get everything filmed this weekend. So I'm just gonna use this vlog to update you guys on some of the things you might have missed. Dun, dun, dun. Our mini greenhouse is complete and I am totally in love with it. So we've got the poly going all the way around, floor to ceiling, completely enclosing it tight all the way for no drafts. And then we have the door. The door we've got so that we can connect it open because that's how it'll be most of the time. And if we're experiencing a cold spell, we can close it up to warm things up. So then when we're closing it up, then we just close it up and it attaches to another screw on this side. How awesome is that? All right, so I just had to... And then for the top part, it's a little more tricky. I actually have to stand on the stool and tuck it in over the bar on the inside. So I just untuck this piece of plastic from the bar and I tuck it underneath here and then I just tuck it in all the way around the top. But in most situations, the greenhouse being this small is going to need to release heat. So having the ability to keep this open at the top is gonna to release the heat the most. But for today and the rest of most of this week, it looks like the weather's gonna be so fantastic we won't need to close the store at all. Another super awesome thing we started working on is just kind of placing out the children's garden. This is not exact yet. We haven't put anything in stone yet, but this is a rough estimation of what we're doing for the kids this year. They're gonna build a teepee garden. It's gonna have a grow tunnel that they can crawl through, and they're gonna have plants growing up the sides, and then all the way around the outside of it, we'll be growing more plants and we'll probably do some bamboo across here for the plants to be able to have something to grow up onto um, but at this point we're just kind of still playing around with some ideas I think we're gonna take that deer fencing and bring it out around the kids garden and close it in to the rest of the garden we're gonna be removing these bamboo posts and putting T-posts mostly. I think we're gonna have the ability to use all T-posts, but I'm not 100% sure yet. But um, we'll be replacing most of those with T-posts. And the ones that we don't, I have some other sturdy poles I found that might work better than the bamboo. We were very lucky to get our nukes installed Saturday morning. So I've got a whole video on that that I'll be editing as well. And um, as you can see, my makeshift entrance reducer has fallen over on that one so I'll probably have to fix that. The entrance reducers that I had on my old hives are missing somehow so I was told I could just use anything a piece of wood or whatever that one's working really good and this one was working yesterday I don't know how it fell down overnight but I'll have to get that adjusted. I did have to add another box on top so that I could add some syrup to help feed them because they are brand new here and the nectar flow isn't heavy yet so it is recommended by the person we got our bees from to feed them now that was the advice I got that was wrong last time we did bees I was told never feed them and that's why we lost our bees because we weren't feeding them during the dearth so we know better now and we're following different person's advice and if any of you guys out there in beekeeper world want to help me out give me any advice at all i'd really appreciate any tips and suggestions of ways we could do things better or different ideas even it may not be better it may just be a different idea and i love hearing other people's ideas so 
share your ideas with me as I've only got one year of beekeeping experience so it's not a whole lot and I really am looking forward to learning more about my bees and getting advice from you guys. We got these window boxes from a friend of ours that's moving. I'm gonna space them out more appropriately and uh, fill them with soil and plant our peas in that so that they can grow up the fence. I thought that would look really cute. And uh, we could even probably put some lettuce under the peas. That would be nice, easy snack. And then our grow bags are all filled up. This one's not, this one doesn't have anything in it, but the rest do. And I have a whole video about us doing our potatoes and grow bags. So you should definitely check that out. I'm excited, can't wait. So our little fig leaf that was all the way uncurled did not survive the cold front even though I covered it with frost fabric, but the buds are still alive and it's going to outgrow that just fine. None of the other cuttings seem to incur any damage at all from the frost, so that's really interesting that just that one fig leaf. I wonder if it wasn't touching the plastic or, oh it wasn't plastic, but you know what I mean. Uh oh, we got ant invasion. That's not good. I don't like ants in my pots. That makes it hard to transplant. <laughs> So it's really interesting to me that I have a whole pot of sticks here that did not take and I was deliberately dividing them up by size. So these were the bigger ones from the bag of cuttings that I got and then the smaller ones were in one of the green pots. And it looks like the smaller ones do far better than the big ones and I was kind of thinking it was going to be the opposite. Funny how plants trick you sometimes. No way, guys. Could it be? Is it possible? Our very first little asparagus spear has arisen. I was a little worried that adding this extra compost on top was gonna make it hard for them to push through, but asparagus do like extra compost added every year, so I'm glad that that worked out. But the bad news is, is that means we waited too long to blow torch. Part of the reason why we didn't blow torch yesterday is because Ryan did a test spot over on the other side of the property on Creeping Charlie and he has notified me it absolutely doesn't kill Creeping Charlie. Now, I don't I, you know, I don't I don't go for one try that's all. So we're definitely going to treat the rest of the area so that the Creeping Charlie is at least confined to these two beds so that we can remove it a little at a time as our schedules allow us to but it's kind of discouraging right now I'm just kind of like looking at it there's one good benefit to this silly creeping Charlie is the fact that the honeybees love it so something tells me that God wanted us to wait until it was too late so that all of this nectar would be given to our beautiful, beautiful little bees and that they could enjoy the bounty of the weeds. <laughs> you can see all the daffodils coming up. There's a nice row of daffodils going down the center so that they'll be around the roots of the bigger fruit trees. And the strawberries are doing really good. Everything's coming up. I kind of pulled away some of these winter annuals so that I could see what kind of development we had on strawberries. And it looks like they're doing pretty good, if you ask me. So, yeah, the comfrey's doing good too. The blackberry is coming up. So everything seems to be doing super good. So I'm gonna continue just taking off the surface layer of the weeds. I like to leave them, they are edible, they are beneficial to the pollinators, but I think they're just crowding in the strawberry. I think the strawberry need the room to stretch out. So I'm not worried too much about roots because these are annuals, they're gonna go away as soon as it's warm. The winter annuals die back and they're not a problem anymore. They will drop all of their seeds before I get to them all, so we'll have them again next year. <laughs> 
garlic is doing incredibly well. Some of these are just so fat already. It's like, wow. So I do want to get in here and make sure that we've got enough mulch on them. Probably add another layer and uh, take out some of this winter rye on the edges if it doesn't start dying back from the summer heat. And look who's decided to join us. My tomatoes are coming up. I am so excited about this, y'all. I love my tomatoes. I think I ended up with like 50 something varieties of tomatoes. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And we're gonna have a good selection of wonderful heirloom tomatoes. We have, I think one that's not an heirloom. It's um, Sun Gold, Sun Gold Select Cherry. One of my favorite cherries and it's not an heirloom, but I love to grow it. I have this, this tray of somewhat pathetic brassicas that need to be separated. I overseeded because our last tray of brassicas barely grew any seeds. So I was worried I had low germination. Turns out I must have just had a weird occurrence that seed tray and it didn't germinate as well as this one. <laughs> so now I better get them separated. try to avoid is having seedlings that need to be transplanted. I typically try to grow them at just the right time on the calendar so that the only transplant they need is into the garden. But unfortunately when the seeds come up in multiple seedlings in the cell, you do have to separate them because they will get very leggy. So we have a little bit of legginess going on with our cabbage and broccoli, but hopefully they'll bounce back and be fine. And the only plant that I ever plant from seed that I intend to transplant before it's done is tomatoes because I start them in the tiny little seed cells. They definitely are going to need to be transplanted into a bigger cell before they go into the ground outside. So other than that, the, all the other seedlings, I try to plant them just right on time. Tomatoes are much more forgiving than other plants during transplanting, so they're my exception. I hope you all enjoyed this video today, catching you up on our incredible weekend. So look forward to those videos that will be coming out this week on how to grow potatoes in a grow bag and installing our nukes. And I think there was something else. Nukes? Our nukes, our bee nukes, nucleus. Nuclear bombs. Yay! So I'll have to edit that out because I'll probably get demonetized for you saying nuclear bombs. Okay. Just bleep the bombs out. Just say nuclear. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm gonna help Vivian get some, steal some of my potting soil and some of my pots so she can transplant some of her dorm room plants. She's been pretty much obsessed with plants in her dorm room, which I think is a pretty fantastic thing. Don't you? Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and... <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I to do the pizza. What do I do? What do I say? <laughs> and we'll see you next, next time, time on Wholesome Roots. Do that the pizza.